All right, in today's video, we're going to be talking about something interesting in the book of Genesis. And I'm going to be using my, my new open Bible here. Let's go to Genesis. We are in chapter 6 today. So this is uh, the reason for the flood. Here, right here. So, let me just adjust this here. Boom. All right, let's have a look at this here. Genesis chapter 6 And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth. And the daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. So these are some of the fallen angels. And if you read the book of Enoch, there's about 200 of them that make a pact to take wives for themselves and then teach them all kinds of how to how to build things, how to do magic arts, all kinds of stuff. But they basically were teaching them stuff about heaven, things that they weren't supposed to do. And uh, so verse 3, And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. Then there were giants in the earth in those days and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, and the same became mighty men which are of old, men of renown. Right there alone, you're not going to hear this talked about in the media at all, uh, that there is findings of bones of giants throughout the earth. You're just not going to hear that. I've heard rumors for years, even down at uh, the Dinosaur Museum here in Alberta, that they're even talking about uh, the idea of hiding bones, or they're just—they're not just—they're not going to make it available to the public, which is interesting because I think, in some ways, it would cause a bit of panic as well. Obviously if you find giant bones around the world so they this is something that is hidden and it's interesting that this happened before the flood and then also after the flood and i believe that someday in the future we're going to get a taste of that as well specifically when people start messing around with dna uh, you start crossbreeding people with animals artificial intelligence that whole kind of thing um we're in for a world of hurt, and it's interesting that there are people that are not seeing the negative consequences of messing with things like this. As Jesus said that in, in the future, it'll be like the days of Noah. And so we're, we're going to be tasting little bits and pieces of that in the future, especially with the rise of artificial intelligence uh, tomorrow um oh what's the name of that show i think it's this sound of change ah it just i forgot the name of the movie but it's about trafficking and there's so many wicked things going on right now on the earth that we're very close to what's going on here all right let's go to the ungodly sin sin continually and god saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually meaning as soon as someone wakes up they're thinking evil thoughts till they go to bed at night don't have time to go to church don't have time to read the bible uh, they just exercise wickedness, don't have time for people, don't have time to help people, nothing. Uh, so verse, verse 6, and it repented 
the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him. Can you imagine? And it grieved him at his heart to make man. He was sorry that he had made man because man became so evil. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. And to me, that perfect is talking about his DNA being perfect. It wasn't corrupted like all the other people, like all the animals, beasts of the earth, all that kind of stuff. That That's what I believe anyway. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, Japheth, and the earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So it wasn't just people. The earth was also corrupt as well. They were messing with the environment, if you will, doing crazy experiments. Who knows what they were doing? And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh is come before me for the earth is filled with violence through them and behold I will destroy them with the earth make thee an ark of gopher wood rooms thou shalt make in the ark and shalt pitch with and without with pitch and this is the fashion which thou shalt make of it the length of the ark shall be 300 cubits the breadth of it 50 cubits and the height of it, 30 cubits. What's interesting is, uh, I think it's, what is it called? The House of Yish, the House of Lebanon, I believe King Solomon made, made uh, one house and with the same exact measurements as this, which is interesting. A uh, window shalt thou make to the ark, and in a cubit shalt thou finish it above. So, Noah is to make a window above the ark, and it's to be a cubit, basically a square cubit. And the door of the ark shall thou set in the side thereof, with lower, second, and third stories shalt thou make it. And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh, wherein is the breath of life from under the heaven, and every living thing that is in the earth shall die. But with thee I will establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons, and thy wife, and thy sons' wives with thee. And of every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort, thou shalt bring into the ark, to keep them alive with thee. They shall be made, they shall be male and female, of the fowls after their kind, and of the cattle after their kind, which is basically all kinds of livestock, horses, camels, everything. And every creeping thing of the earth after his kind, two of every sort, shall come unto thee to keep them alive. Right here, right here. And take thou unto thee of all the food that is eaten, and thou shalt gather it to thee, and it shall be for food for thee. And for them, thus did Noah according to all that God commanded him, so did he. So the food is basically fruit and vegetables, no meat. People didn't eat meat back then. Neither did the animals. The animals didn't kill and eat each other with meat. In fact, they weren't even afraid of people. This is one of the, the easy ways for Noah to be able to take the bring the animals onto the ark. They're not afraid of people. It's not until after the flood that people be, that animals become afraid and the fear and dread of people actually go upon them. And God says that now you can actually eat, eat certain kinds of animals, basically. And he also sets up a rule saying, uh, basically, you shall not murder people or eat people. All this kind of wicked stuff that was going on in chapter 6. Cannibalism, inbreeding, all kinds of crazy stuff with animals. And... Uh, yeah, so really a dark time in history. And the interesting thing is today 
We have all kinds of crazy stuff going on around the world. And at a glance, when you see it in the news and the media pumped every single day, you can almost look at it that, man, we are very close to this being similar to the days of Noah. So I hope you got something out of it in the next chapter. Obviously, we're going to talk about the flood itself, the great deluge, and my thoughts around that. If you got something out of this, let me know. Feel free to subscribe to this channel, and uh, don't forget to leave a comment. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it.